Hello everyone. Myself, Dr. Sanjay Khatri. I am pediatric educator on this Unacademy platform. Today we are discussing 5 MCQ in 15 minutes. Okay. So, Myself, Dr. Sanjay Khatri. I am having 19 year experience of teaching to the PG aspirants. Since 2001, I am teaching the PG aspirants. Okay. So, my, this is my telegram group. If you can join, we have a nice interaction on the various pediatric topic you can ask queries as number you can ask we i am putting some pdf also some questions also so if possible join me on my telegram group okay so now straight come to the questions all are true regarding maternal serum marker for screening of down syndrome yeah we know alpha fetoprotein hcg estradiol pappa pp papppa is Pregnancy associated placental protein A. We remember these are the four markers. Which, which increase, which decrease. Sometimes we forget. So we just make a concept. We need to remember this type of question comes regularly in exam. Which increase, which decrease. See, so these are the biochemical marker for detection of Down syndrome. In first trimester, we use PAPPA and beta HCG. These which are the marker used in antenatal detection of Down syndrome in the first trimester? It is PAPPA and beta HCG. Second trimester, we use alpha fetoprotein, estriol, HCG, inhibin. If we consider first three, this is triple test. And if we add inhibin in this, it become quadruple test. It become quadruple test. Now, how you will remember which are increasing and which are decreasing? You can write some mnemonic, okay, like this, this mnemonic is there, see. You remember this, anyway, you feel comfortable, you can remember, apex. So, alpha fetoprotein, PAPPA, estradiol decreases, HI increases, HCG inhibin increases, but you need to remember which increase, which decrease, and what are the marker. What marker used in first trimester? What marker used in second trimester? This is memory based question. Okay. What is the fourth marker add in the quadruple test? It is inhibin. It is inhibin. So, this is about the antenatal diagnosis of Down syndrome biochemical marker. Okay. Now, come to all are the multifactorial disorder except. Sometimes we read genetics. We read Mendelian inheritance, non Mendelian inheritance. Autosomal recessive, dominant, but this topic sometime we left. Multifactorial disorder. So, question is this. Pyloric stenosis, cleft palate, sickle cell anemia, neural tube defect. What are the multifactorial disorder? Now, see, multifactorial disorders are where two or more genes with additive effect of environment responsible for some condition. It is multifactorial inheritance. Like hypercholesteremia, one gene. Obesity, second gene. Environmental effect, lack of exercise, alcohol leads to coronary artery disease. Where two or more genes with additive effect of environment responsible for some condition. This type of question is common. Which of the following is multifactorial disorder? Out of these, see, we need to remember example of multifactorial disorder. So, congenital malformations. These are the neural tube defect, cleft lip and palate. Pyloric stenosis, congenital dislocation of hip, Hirschsprung disease, and congenital heart disease. These all are the multifactorial inheritance. How their frequency changes from next to next generation? What is the effect of first degree relative, second degree relative? I will cover in my genetic class in detail. But in this class, you need to remember examples. These are the example of congenital malformation. These all are the multifactorial inheritance. Now few acquired diseases in children and adults coronary artery disease cad hypertension ht asthma epilepsy diabetes mellitus rheumatoid arthritis multiple sclerosis and schizophrenia these all are multifactorial inheritance what is multifactorial inheritance where two or more genes two or more genes with additive effect of environment responsible for some condition. So, we need to remember these example because sometime question come, then we stuck. So, 
now we know the example so we know pyloric stenosis it's a multifactorial cleft palate is a multifactorial neural tube defect is a multifactorial sickle cell anemia is not multifactorial can anybody tell me what is the inheritance of sickle cell anemia yes 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 you are right it is autosomal recessive but key factor you need to remember multifactorial disorders name in congenital they are pyloric stenosis cleft lip neural tube defect then congenital dislocation of hip then hirschsprung disease these all are the congenital in adults called coronary artery disease hypertension diabetes rheumatoid arthritis schizophrenia multiple sclerosis these all are present in adult patients okay asthma epilepsy these are multifactorial inheritance sometime patient come ye kyon hua mere bachche ko there are multi multiple factor some genes some environmental all are responsible for these are the multifactorial inheritance now come to question number 3 earliest response to iron therapy in iron deficiency anemia when we start iron what is the earliest response occur in the body okay most of the time you think it's reticulocytosis it's not reticulocytosis so what is the response to iron when we start iron in iron deficiency anemia when we start iron in iron deficiency anemia this is a very good table from the nelson see concentrate on this table from 12 to 24 hour earliest replacement of intracellular enzymes iron containing enzyme what are the iron containing enzyme catalase peroxidase mao you have read in pharma mao inhibitors mao is the iron containing enzyme the first change occur in body replacement of intracellular iron containing enzyme it leads to subjective improvement means there is a decrease irritability increase appetite whenever patient comes to a pediatrician and mother complain mere bacche ko bhook nahi lagti complain of decrease appetite what pediatrician used to do they start iron because iron increase the appetite in 12 to 24 hour replacement of intracellular enzyme this is the earliest change then 36 to 48 hour 36 to 48 hour erythroid hyperplasia erythroid hyperplasia then 48 to 72 hour reticulocytosis occur so mcqs come when retic counts increase when you start iron third day third day 48 to 72 hour and peak at 5 to 7 days when hemoglobin begin to increase from fourth day onward 30 day we continue iron therapy for 3 month because we want to replenish the stores so lot of question is there in physiology also when hemoglobin begin to increase when you start iron from fourth day when reticulocytosis occur when you start iron third day peak at 5 to 7 day what is the earliest change when you start iron in iron deficiency anemia earliest change is replacement of intracellular enzyme it is the replacement of intracellular iron containing enzymes or subjective improvement you need to remember this you need to remember this come to the question earliest response to iron therapy in iron deficiency anemia is replacement of intracellular enzymes i hope i am clear because erythroid hyperplasia occur 36 to 48 hour reticulocytosis occur 48 to 72 hour hemoglobin begin to increase hemoglobin begin to increase hemoglobin begin to increase just a minute hemoglobin begin to increase from fourth day onward from fourth day onward so this is the answer so replacement of intracellular enzymes when we start iron is the earliest change in iron deficiency anemia now poor prognostic factor of aml is suggested by now only memory will occur nothing nothing only memory will help us how we can remember this question by repeated by repeated learning repeated hearing repeated mcqs we try to make a concept okay so all are the poor and all are the good prognostic factor of aml in all this question asked so many time this question asked so many time so poor prognostic factor in aml aml 
inversion 16 is a good translocation 15 17 translocation 8 21 these all are good prognostic factor gene mutation npm good prognostic npm good morning npm is a good prognostic factor other gene ftl3 flt3 is a good poor prognostic factor monosomy 7 is a poor prognostic factor so a b and c are the good prognostic factor and monosomy 7 monosomy 7 monosomy 5 these in v3 or poor prognostic factor we need to remember this repeatedly 15 17 8 21 is a good prognostic factor philadelphia chromosome is a poor prognostic factor 9 22 so what we can do we can remember them nicely in a table okay m3 m4 is a good prognostic factor fab classification m0 m5 m6 m7 is a poor prognostic factor tlc is okay if less than 10000 it's a poor prognosis sorry good prognosis more than 1 lakh poor prognosis now concentrate on this translocation 15 17 8 21 in v16 inversion 16 is a good prognostic factor no concept you need to remember them repeatedly repeatedly this is the purpose of this session okay if i speak you listen at least something will remain in your mind monosomy 5 monosomy 7 in v3 and philadelphia chromosome these are the poor prognostic factor now come here see np3 np3 npm1 is a good prognostic factor flp3 is a poor prognostic factor how you remember good morning g m npm is a good prognostic factor FLT3 is a poor prognostic factor marker if these marker present on lymphocytes CD34 and P glycoprotein poor prognostic factor no way you need to remember it repeatedly so this 2 minutes you hear me 2 minutes you remember this at least there is a one layer of memory in your mind poor prognostic factor in AML good prognostic factor in AML this task location carries the good prognosis philadelphia chromosome carries the poor prognosis you need to remember the purpose of this class to make you remember the things changes occur in iron deficiency anemia multifactorial disorder down syndrome antenatal marker which increase which decrease which increase which decrease you need to remember by repeated repeated hearing aml there is no way AML ALL good and poor prognostic factor these questions are coming every 2 year 3 year but we can't avoid these topic we need to learn these topic apgar score listen question carefully 1 minute baby is floppy gasping respiration heart rate is 40 completely pale baby is completely pale and grimaces in response to nasal catheter what is the apgar of the baby again the same thing if you remember the apgar score if you remember the scale then only you can am able to answer so how can you remember how can you remember if baby is floppy what is the apgar zero gasping irregular respiration it's one heart rate 40 less than 100 it's one pale again it's zero and grimace it's 1 1 plus 1 plus 1 apgar is 3 but how can you reach this answer if you remember each and every parameter of apgar with its scoring this is the apgar score see just read it concentrate for one two minutes okay heart rate absent 0 below 100 1 over 100 2 respiration no effort absent in question baby is gasping means irregular respiration if crying it's two muscle tone limp in question hypotonia baby is hypotonic limp so zero some flexion one active motion two reflex grimaces if you put a catheter baby look like this it this is grimace so it is one if cough or sneeze it is two in question it's written baby is pale baby is pale means pale it is zero if 
body pink extremity blue peripheral cyanosis abgar is one completely pale two you can answer only if you remember each and every parameter of abgar score and this question is coming repeatedly in the exam so you need to remember abgar score antenatal splenic of down syndrome marker response to iron in iron deficiency anemia these all question poor and good prognostic factor of aml and all aml and all these are memory based question no concept if you have a memory you can answer these question this is the purpose of five mcqs in 15 minutes so i will give you some something to remember some layer of memory in your mind if you listen carefully just if you are reading something just pre just see this video on youtube okay pediatrics five question yeah apgar poor prognostic factor in aml then iron deficiency anemia response multifactorial disorders their examples and down syndrome marker for antenatal diagnosis definitely in 10 minutes you are getting something out of this which will help you to solve some questions okay so our ultimate aim to crack the exam to crack the neat pg and various exam for that join an academy if you want to he hear more from me in the pediatric section so join pediatric course which i start from the july august and september so my code is dr sanjay khatri okay in first part i will cover gi systemic pediatrics so gi disorder respiratory disorder i will cover in detail all the questions in various exam i will cover in that class okay gi disorder everything about diarrhea malabsorption syndrome respiratory disorder cardiovascular disorder asynotic and synoptic chd renal system neurological disorder this is type part 1 this is plus course you need to register an academy yes there are some free classes also on an academy we you should definitely watch them in my section 10 pm i am taking 10 pm clinical mcq every thursday 10 pm clinical mcq every thursday 10 pm last thursday i taught clinical mcq neurology before that clinical mcq cardiology coming thursday i will teach you clinical mcq nephrology clinical mcqs are good high yield question in one hour i give you the nice concept of six seven question what is the clinical approach how can you approach a synoptic chd a synoptic chd some typical question in cardiology some typical question seizures myopathy neuropathy neurology in my coming class next thursday i will teach you the nephrology barter syndrome hemolytic uremic syndrome post optococal gonorrhea nephritis nephrotic syndrome these concept clinical based question and youtube session here we are the five images in 15 minutes i have taken the class five mcq in 15 minutes two three sessions are there in my youtube syndrome session these all are free classes you can join these classes and enjoy reading and teaching okay so these are the purpose for an academy to make you comfortable to make you understand the things so this is the youtube classes special classes these all are free so this is from my side so keep reading thank you